Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Happy Monday. For indeed, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So hope everyone had a wonderful and blessed weekend. For truly, we are in a great season. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning, Liliana. Good morning, Brother Troy. So today, we are going to focus. Good morning, Marie. Today, we are going to focus on Brother Rob Pixley. Ruth, hope everyone has had an awesome weekend and is blessed and got to enjoy some beautiful weather and hopefully the storm didn't come rock ya. It appears that it came in last night here in North Carolina. So there's been lots of thunder and booming and stuff going on, but it appears that it has passed. So this too, every storm passes. So that is the beauty of it all, is no matter how bad the storms may be, that once they will pass. So it is part of life, it is part of the ecosystem, and it is part of trusting in the Lord with all your heart. It's because there's physical storms, there's emotional storms, there's spiritual storms. All of them pass. So have faith in the one who was and is and is yet to come. Because he is with you in the storm. Every time. So today. Today we are going to focus on Proverbs 8 verses 13 through 21. Now last week uh, again going into going into good morning Nicole. Good morning Janine. Good old 7-7 seven, seven family. Um going into an election season as we can see there is much division and chaos pouring out through uh, our country but other countries as well i think there's a just a, a season right now where the enemy knows he is running out of time he's got a short time left therefore he is coming out guns blazing to the best of his ability uh and last week we focused on matters of the heart and your character and as we finish off, you know, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Uh, good morning, Brother Chris. Good morning, Sherry. You know, there's the power of life and death is in the tongue. We talked about how blessing and cursing should not come out of the same mouth. Does a spring of water bubble out both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or grapevine produce figs? No. And you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. So if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect. And we could also control ourselves in every other way. So we have read, we have read, we know that you know better. We talked about that the other day. But as we're going into this week, I have come to the revelation, the Holy Spirit led um, unveiling of where we are and I believe that we are under the impression that our words don't matter even though we just spent the whole week last week saying how important it is and how how mighty of the a weapon the small tongue is how it could set it's a restless evil full of deadly poison uh, among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It's a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. And it can set your whole life on fire for it is set on fire by hell itself. So just recapping on some of the scriptures from last week. So this week, I believe that in our societies, all of them globally, that we have embraced cursing Cursing used to be speaking evil over one another in order to bring them harm. It had been done so frequently that now cursing has just become a standard of speech. So, be very clear. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not saying that you are working your way towards righteousness. 
but what I am referring to. Brother Daniel, good morning, sir. Pastor Antoine, good evening, sir, or good, good morning, sir, and good morning, Bernadette. Um, so I'm not talking about religion, working our way to something, but what I am pointing out is biblically, it is covered over and over and over and over and over and over and over again by the words that we speak coming out of our mouth. So with that said, that is going to be our focus for the week, is extracting from the scriptures what the word of God says about cursing. So our society has embraced cursing as just common speech. We just feel that it has, no, it's just the way we talk. However, biblically, it would appear that it was a big deal in the Bible. Now, if it was a big deal in the Bible, that means it still is a big deal in the Bible. So today, when we are talking about wisdom, that's the four, uh, that is going to be the context of Proverbs 8, is talking about wisdom. In my personal belief, I believe that it is about, um, the, it is about Yeshua being wisdom. My personal belief. So read Proverbs 8 on your own. But I'm going to share with you today, verses 13 through 21. Brother Leroy, appreciate you hanging out with us. God bless you. Now, all who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption, and perverse speech. Common sense and success belong to me. Insight and strength are mine. Because of me, kings reign and rulers make just decrees. Rulers lead with my help, and nobles make righteous judgments. I love all who love me, and those who search will surely find me. I have riches and honor, as well as enduring wealth and justice. My gifts are better than gold, even the purest gold. My wages better than sterling silver, I walk in righteousness and paths of justice, and those who love me inherit wealth. I will fill their treasuries. So again, the context of Proverbs 8 is referring to wisdom. It is my personal belief. If you absorb Proverbs 8, I really feel like they are talking about Jehovah Jireh, the provider. I believe it is the way it is read, to me, it appears that we are referring to the characteristics, one of the sets of the characteristics of Yeshua. And that's just my personal opinion. Either way, if we are still just talking about wisdom, all who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption, and perverse speech. So this week, I just wanted to encourage you not because of being religious, but it is written that perverse speech and the words we speak have meaning and they have power. So when we are cursing, this is something that biblically that it is really pretty strong against. So I just want to illuminate that. This isn't for a conviction or condemnation of you. This is if you are cursing a lot out of what we read all of last week. It said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we have to kind of choose here what we're going to follow. We're either going to follow the ways of the world and be worldly, or we're going to follow the ways of the word, and we're going to trust in what the word says. Remember, no pressure, but it says, if you are a friend of the world, it makes you an enemy of God. So if we follow the ways of the world, that means that we are becoming an enemy of God. That is what the scriptures say. I don't think he was kidding. So I am very cautious. Remember I said, Paul said, I work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Yes, God is full of and abundant with grace and mercy. However, he says, Jesus, when he was walking with the disciples, he says, if you love me, You'll obey my commands. So does that mean if we don't obey his commands, we don't love him? It would stand to reason that could be true. So uh, we should just be mindful. Today is just a simple start off of our teaching for the week. I just want to extract 
I want to get to the grassroots of the matters of the heart. Why is our society tearing each other apart? I think it was compromise. So when you look at sin, sin is a small compromise. When you look at the example I use very often is King David with Bathsheba. It was a small compromise. There was no big sin in him watching Bathsheba bathe from his own rooftop. But what happened is that little bit of compromise began to shift all the way through a series of events that he didn't even realize he was doing at the time because it was just one small compromise, one small compromise, one small compromise, one small compromise, one small compromise. One small compromise. And then, where was he? He was so far off beaten path that someone, Samuel, had to come to him and give him a false story about a man who had a whole herd of animals. And he took one of the sheep from this poor man who only had one and nurtured that one as his own. King David, in rage, slams his fist down and says, execute that man. And Samuel says, that man was you. Because King David, through small, tiny compromises, eventually murdered Bathsheba's husband after laying with her and getting her pregnant and having to figure out a way out of the scenario, he ends up sending Uriah to the front line and murders him. I use that example all the time because it started so simple. It was just a little compromise. And I bring that up because I think cursing out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I used to curse a lot. I'm from New Jersey. That's like just part of the thing. That's just the way you speak. But the Holy Spirit began to convict me and it was bringing out the impurities that were in my heart. Because truly, when I started to realize that ah, it didn't feel as good to curse anymore, when that used to be my big words, uh, that was my whole conversation most of the time when I used to hang out in bars. But the Spirit began to convict me and say, not condemn me, but convict me. And I started feeling like maybe I should use different wording. It didn't feel as good to curse anymore. And what I'm bringing out is I think we're in a part of our society today where small compromises, the enemy has deceived us into making little tiny, tiny, tiny compromises to where we don't necessarily see things wrong anymore that used to be obviously wrong. So now pornography, uh, sex trafficking, all this has gotten so far out of control, we're outraged. But we weren't outraged when it started off small. And I was guilty too. I used to be a dancer, so I can't really sit here and, and poke at strip clubs. But that was a whole lifetime ago, and the Lord has changed my spirit. So those small compromises in the beginning, no one really paid attention. But now that we're at a point where there's child pornography, we're in outraged. But it didn't just start out. Satan didn't just pop up with child pornography. It started out kind of small. And he's got us to compromise our standards just a little bit, 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 just a little bit. Now generations have passed and those small compromises have led us to a place where people are abducting children and having pornographic films with them. So that is an outrage. That is disgusting. But we didn't mind when it was just a little bit at a time. So Satan can sneak in. Point being. Satan can sneak in by just that little compromise and he works on us till we desensitize to what's happening. So he won't see when he goes for the big thing because it starts off small. So everything we do is consistency over time. If you go to the gym and you want to be healthy, people are like, oh my gosh, Clarence, you must work out all the time. I haven't worked out in two years, but I've been consistent over 35 years. So being that I've been consistent over 35 years, it doesn't take much effort for me to stay focused on my health goals because I have healthy habits. They're consistent over time. Spiritually, I applaud, but I also fear that one little compromise over time it can make sin so commonplace to us where it really doesn't jump out anymore. It doesn't shock us anymore when people curse. It doesn't shock us anymore when people say curse words or use the Lord's name in vain. It's just become small over time. But do you know the Israelites, they were given a command to not use the Lord's name in vain ever? 
As a matter of fact, if you go to some Hebrew today, writers, when they write an article and they say the name God, El Shaddai, they don't spell G-O-D because they think it's blasphemy to use his name in vain. So they put a G, a, a, a um, hyphen, and then a D. They won't even spell the name God because they honor his name so much they wouldn't dare, they wouldn't dare de-edify his name by spelling it out when it wasn't necessary to call upon it. Think about that. Our society has become a point where we use that as a common curse word. And that is very dangerous because we have taken that name and we have used it in such a fashion where Satan is slowly desensitizing the name of God, but we don't even realize it. So today, all who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption, and perverse speech. So today, Father God, we just praise you. We glorify you. We lift you up. Lord, just, we know there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. But you've given us your Holy Spirit to guide us in all things. So, Lord, if there's anything that we need to turn back from, if there's any words that we say that we need to omit from our vocabulary, Lord, I just pray that you guide each and every one of us by your Holy Spirit right now. If there's any behaviors that we're making small, tiny compromises that don't seem big right now, but you know the end because you're the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. If you know it's going to lead to our destruction, if you know it's going to lead to a place where we're far from you, Lord, we just pray right now that you get those things away we just bind and break any word curses intentional or unintentional lord we just protect we protect our hearts we guard our hearts by watching our tongues so lord we just pray right now that you open our eyes our ears our heart and our soul and break our heart for what breaks yours even within our speech lord we don't want a society of complacency to separate us from you so pour out your spirit upon us lord Change us from the inside out. Lord, show us where we may have failed you. Forgive us of any of our sins. Lord, just continue to bless us abundantly with your presence. So, Lord, we just need you. We glorify you. We lift you up. We want to honor you with all of our hearts. Let nothing get in the way of our relationship with you, Father God. So we just trust in you. We glorify you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. You said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. So Lord, help us, help convict us of the things that are wicked in your sight. Even if they may not be wicked in our own right now because we're desensitized to a society that has accepted them. Lord, show us where we may have hurt you, wronged you, sinned against you. It's you and you alone we sin against, Lord. So help us to be better examples of who you are and who we are in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the two things that we know for certain, Jane, good evening. And that is Jesus loves you, Clarence loves you. The third thing is you can't do anything about it either anyway. So you might as well get used to it. So today, I encourage you. And you don't have to beat up on people that curse their normal vocabulary. They just don't even know any better. But if you know better, you knew better. If you know better, guard your mouth because by guarding your mouth or your typing, you're also guarding your heart. Because remember, we must all stand account on every idle word spoken on Judgment Day. And the words that we say will either condemn us or acquit us. So it is important what we say. It is important how we speak. It is important what we type. So just be focused on it. I'm not condemning you. I used to curse a lot. You couldn't have me in public after two drinks. Thankfully, I don't drink and I really don't curse that much anymore either. If I stub my toe in the middle of the night, that might be a different story. If I smash my finger with a hammer, that might be a different story. But it's just normal conversation. I have found a way to have better conversations without utilizing those words. Not because I'm so righteous and not because I'm so holy, but because he deserves my best. And me giving him my best is making sure that I represent him in a proper way. So I am mindful on how I show up because I don't want anyone to think that, oh, well, you know, those Christians are the biggest hypocrites out there anyway. 
So I never want that to be the case. If people, if I am the only gospel someone's ever going to see, I am very mindful how I show up. Why? Because we know better. So I am just going to challenge you today. I'm not condemning you. I challenge you today. Be mindful of your words. Don't beat other people up for their words. Just be mindful of your own. Let's be mindful how we react on the internet or respond on the internet. Let's be mindful how we interact with each other because this is how we show up. This is making disciples. People will follow and model our behavior. We don't want to be caught up in a lot of conspiracies and garbage and fights and arguments because people look at us and go, man, see those Christians? And the enemy is whispering in their ear to think that way. See, you don't want to be like them, the accuser. So I'll shut up because I'm off today. I have to get some stuff done and I'll keep you here all morning. So I love you guys. God bless, share and love one another. One job, folks. Love one another.